what can you tease us about the upcoming episodes? Um, well, it's all one big uh, ramp up to the finale. Um, we are going to heat up basically all elements of the show um, and then, you know, blow it all up sort of figuratively in, in the last episode. Um, the Probably the, the big things that I would say are the whole undertaking that we've been teasing. Um, you're, you know, at like in episode 18, last week's episode, we sort of showed you that we've had this plan for the Glades ever since episode two, when we first had the glyph appear. Um, you're going to learn what that plan is. You're going to learn why it is. You're going to learn who's, who exactly is behind it. Everything is going to get revealed. Uh, and then it's all going to be a question of can Oliver stop it in time. At the same time, sort of on the personal front, we're going to bring the show sort of full circle. Uh, the pilot ended, the penultimate scene in the pilot is Oliver, Laurel, and Tommy, you know, Laurel and Tommy, their relationship revealed, and Oliver watching from afar and sort of sending up that love triangle. We're basically going to heat up that whole love triangle uh, and, you know, bring it to a climax, no pun intended, towards the end of, uh, <laughs> towards the end of the first season. Um, so it's probably like the big things. Oh, and also, um, just as we're driving towards a finale in the present day, we're also driving to a finale in the flashbacks on the island. Um, so you'll learn what that missile launcher is, you know, what Yao Fei's involvement is, what Fire's plan is. All that stuff's going to get revealed also. Um, how, how connected is your interpretation of Arrow to the rest of the DV, DC universe? Are you a separate entity or are you connected to the rest? Because there's villains I've noticed that are dropping, obviously, from the DC universe. Well, um, you know, we're, we're comic book fans and we're, we're fans of Green Arrow and we're fans of the DC universe. So what we'll do is we'll... We'll draw from you know the toys in the toy box, um, and the folks at DC are really supportive and great about that. Um, you know, continuity-wise, we're separate. You know, we sort of exist in our own universe, and Green Arrow of the comics exists, exists in the DC universe. But we love drawing on influences and characters from the DC universe whenever we can. We always we, we're always very careful not to let the cart drag the horse. We try to come up with the story first, and then ask ourselves: Is there a DC comic character that can? Sort of fit into this, um, but uh, we're always looking for those opportunities because it's part of the fun for us of doing the show, and I think it's part of the fun for the comic book readers of watching the show. So this, ob this was obviously a, almost a spin-off of small um, kind of. No, no, we kind I of. It was a different. Yeah, we really. I mean, it was. It was actually. Our approach was very, very different from Smallville because Smallville was all about sort of, you know, honoring the character of Superman. And we sort of felt in order to do Green Arrow properly, you had to take a much more sort of grounded, less comic book related approach because he's a very, he's a much more grounded character. He doesn't have any superpowers. Um, so our, our version of Green Arrow in Arrow is very different from the version of Green Arrow in Smallville, um, and that and that was the other thing is we didn't want to just rehash what had been done on Smallville. Smallville was a very successful show that ran for ten years and was absolutely amazing. Um, but you know you're not doing anything new if you're just basically doing Smallville season eleven, um, <laughs> which they're already doing in the comics, and that's great. And Brian Miller, you know, who's a friend of ours and, and wrote uh, this week's episode, uh, episode nineteen. Um, you know, nothing but love for, for Smallville, but just as if we were going to do Batman, it would be sort of foolhardy to follow, to do Batman the way Chris Nolan did Batman. You always got to invent something new and put your own spin on it. Are you putting a young Bruce Wayne in the show at all? Is that, um, there's rumors to that. Uh, you know, it's funny. That would be, we, that would be totally fun and awesome. Um, for now, the, the the bat characters are kind of not available to us because they've got movie aspirations and, and whatnot. So all, all those issues sort of have to get resolved before we can even look at any of the bat characters. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the Dark Archer and yes. the whole like that is? Well, first of all, I love John Berman, so I'm Thank really you. really happy. You we guys love have him too. Him. We love him. Um, <laughs> 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 Similar love. All right. So my question is, what's in the future for the Dark? Um, well, he's obviously, I don't think I'm spoiling anything when I say, not that I can tell you guys really wouldn't mind some spoilers, um, is, he's the big bad of the year. Um, so what we're really headed toward is an epic smackdown between Oliver and Malcolm. Um, and in particular, we're headed towards what the question of, are 
is Oliver going to learn that Malcolm's the Dark Archer, and or is Malcolm going to learn that Oliver's the Arrow? Um, and at the same time, Barrowman's character, Malcolm Merlin, has been involved in orchestrating this whole, what we call the undertaking. What's that all about? What's the plan? Um, will Oliver find out what it is in time? Will he stop it in time? Will he find out what his mother's involvement is? Um, all these things are, you know, basically episodes 21 through 23 concerns itself entirely with that. Um, we're going to learn exactly what The Undertaking is and what Malcolm's whole backstory is. You know, um, we hinted at it, we've been hinting at it a little bit in each episode. We're going to really sort of fully explicate what's been driving Malcolm um, all these years and what, what sort of fuels his you know, dark archerness, if you will. I got, I got, I, I got more questions. <laughs> I got, I got some. You guys are being polite. Yeah. No, that, that's totally fine. So I've noticed there's a, I don't know if there's a comment on your part, of, but there's a fascinating, like, almost a generational conflict between parents and children. Yes. In the show. Yes. Is that, is that a, a belief that you have that eventually children and parents will always conflict and always run against each other's desires? That, that's a terrific question. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a really terrific question. Um, you know, we, the show for us, I, I think I think if you look at the stuff that Andrew, Greg, and I have all written both together and separately, this generational conflict, the issue of are you your father's son, um, all these things sort of speak to us as, as people and as writers, so it influences Arrow. Um, from, from Jump, we always sort of tried to write Arrow as sort of the Shakespearean kind of drama, and I think an element of Shakespearean drama is this generational exactly sort of conflict. Um, you know, so we were, you know, so that was very intentional on our part. Um, and I will say the character of Robert looms very, very large in our final three episodes. Um, and, you know, one of the things we always say is like this season has been about how does Oliver honor his father's memory and his father's sacrifice. And, you know, in episode 22, um, Oliver really learns how to do that. Um, and it influences him in his journey a great deal. Um, so yes, completely intentional. Um, we'll continue to reverberate so throughout the, the season. Was like Lady Macbeth. Yeah, actually, her whole scene of you know her hand. Yeah, you know, exactly. We always call that the Macbeth, Lady Macbeth yeah. scene. Um, and we always we always you know sort of intentionally. It's funny. The pivot that we did on her was we want her to look like Gertrude, but really be Lady Macbeth. Um, and I think if you sort of watch. You know the season. You sort of see the little head fake that we did there um, with getting people to think that she was first like Gertrude, but then revealing that she's she's more Lady Macbeth. I have one, one quick question. Um, the everybody's finding out now that our, Oliver's big secret. But what I really like is that Felicity and Diggle have basically been his conscience. Yes. You know, to keep him from falling off the edge. Yes. Uh, how can you talk about that? Like how deliberate that was? Uh, incredibly deliberate. We, you know. We always sort of knew from Jump that Oliver would need someone to act as his conscience. Originally that was just going to be Diggle. But then we sort of stumbled upon this character of Felicity and the more she was helping Oliver just as the IT tech, the more we realized, God, you know, we've got to have her learn Oliver's identity because at some point she just uh, seems to become really stupid. Um, so we, we almost sort of wrote ourselves into this position where we had no choice but to reveal the secret to Felicity, but it's been really, really helpful because, you know, I think Diggle provides Oliver's conscience in sort of this, you know, sort of as the arrow, and Felicity provides Oliver's conscience as Oliver. Um, and so they each appeal to Oliver's two sides for himself. Um, and Felicity and Diggle aren't always on the same page um, in terms of the advice that they give and the things that they're concerned about are, are always very different. You know, Diggle's always sort of worried about Oliver sort of, you know, in his pursuit as the arrow, whereas Felicity's worried about Oliver in his connections with other people. You know, as as Oliver, um, and that's a fun, you know, that's a fun dynamic to do. You don't want them both sort of being a Greek chorus singing the exact same tune, you know.